So we're catching up here and I wanted to show Gabriel a couple of things that we do with agents. We just looked at the Cornelius agent together, but we will touch on that again as well. Gabriel, I'm sorry for this exprompt kind of interview, but you would be incredibly helpful if you uh, just you know listen to what I have to show and ask me questions. That's what I need to actually, you know, maybe get some insights or remember something to answer. Gabriel, maybe you can introduce yourself quickly as well. Yeah, I am a PhD student at University College London, and I am currently studying LLMs as a form of distributed cognition. Yeah, is that nice. good? High level enough? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. Just so people understand that you actually know what you're talking about. So I have a group of agents that are used for work mostly, and they consist of several sub-agents and one high-level agent that is on the top. They are organized in the agents structure. We have a top-level agent that kind of controls the agents on the bottom levels. And those are, there are several of them. There's Corbin responsible for the work with business tasks, my Google Calendar, my Gmail, my contacts, my CRM and other stuff. Then there is Ruby that is responsible for creating content and posting that across social media. And there is Cornelius that is responsible for managing my knowledge base, what's going on. And the guy on top that we launched just now, I actually didn't come up with the right name for that month. So whatever, I call it five sometimes. But anyway, that's the overarching guy, and it is responsible for controlling sub-agents below. And if I just ask, who are you, it's going to tell me that this is the basic responsibility that it has, high-level agent management agent. So it's not doing anything useful except for managing the agents. From here, I can launch my Corbin. I created a special command for that, and that's the one we're going to start with. This is Corbin, and let's see what it has name. Email and calendar management, Google Workspace integration, Fibery, contact database, YouTube management, Apollo, and a bunch of other stuff. It also manages a couple of shared folders that we have in the team that are our source of truth for the knowledge base of the company. There's also search enabled through Vertex AI. There is some scheduling enabled, specialized sub-agents for complex domain tasks. And I think there's some, oh yeah, the other very important thing here is the memory system that it has. It keeps a memory with all of my preferences, goals, objectives, and stuff like that. Now, tell me about your sub-agents. So I'm just going to take a look what kind of sub-agents we have there right now. And we're talking about, oh my God, there's a lot. Fibery management, YouTube management, this file system indexer is an interesting thing. I'm not going to dive deep into that. Scheduler, vector store. Yeah, so basically all the features that it needs. And every time I work with something, I just, you know, it's connected to my Gmail. I can send you an email right now from, from here if I want. Okay. okay, so the next agent I can run from here is actually Cornelius itself. So I just put Cornelius and in a second it's going to open a Cornelius for me. Again, same logic. As you can see, I also just for convenience use different color profiles for different agents. I understand who lives where. And I, you know, with Cornelius I already showed you how we work, but we, we haven't recorded that actually. So I'm going to walk people through what Cornelius is. I did have a record before with this agent showing the second brain management system, but let's see what it has to say. You mentioned, you know, having multiple second brains is because this is your work use case. Is it automatically like querying your work knowledge base or do you, do you have to choose? Yeah, that's a great question. This is one of the use cases that can be useful. Like putting your knowledge base into this kind of map. I don't find this particular use case useful for me right now because we're using vector search and file search, and that's enough in the case of the knowledge base. This concept of Cornelius and the second brain is useful when you have a lot of unstructured, disconnected information that you need to put in a cohesive, kind of connected map of the knowledge that can be extracted in a reasonable way from there. Now, our source of truths that we have for the Corbin project, it's not like that. In the source of truths, what I, the approach that I took, as I said, that agent needs to go and understand what is in each of the files and then create a mirror of this folder with the description of each of the files. That's why we have this reindex file command. 
And then on top of that, apply the vector store to easily search through those descriptions to give you like a fast way to operate there. Right. So Cornelius, did I answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Please feel free to interrupt me. I'm I think though your questions are the most important right now, for sure. Cornelius, it's the second brain project that holds my Obsidian second brain that you can see on the background, this chart representation of this brain in Obsidian. And it has 2,000 nodes and all that kind of stuff. And what I do is I store my knowledge in the way where I can always query it and where I am building up the connections between different concepts within my knowledge, different ideas that I had or there read somewhere and interpret it in some way of mine. So I want to store this knowledge so that they, later I can use this knowledge for making articles, writing books, thinking, brainstorming, and just, you know, doing my daily chores. So it does the inside harvesting and knowledge synthesis, and it allows to easily query this base of knowledge through the combination, like kind of hybrid approach between vector and graph databases and then yeah out of that i can generate articles i can brainstorm i can maintain my knowledge structure going forward etc and then i have other agents who are using this agent cornelius specifically in order to get my opinion on something like or right now it's also same kind of command so i'm starting ruby which is an agent for content creation and distribution. It is connected to a bunch of uh, systems that are doing that. And it can use Cornelius to get insights out of that on whatever topic. And uh, so let's first, I handle content generation, repurposing distribution across social platforms, blah, 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 blah. And so now what I can do here with Ruby is something like this. Get my actives agent automation future for next one, two years and use Cornelius. So if, if, if I did everything right, it's going to pick up and call Cornelius in a headless mode, wait for a little bit and uh, yeah, see, see what happens. Yeah, it's going to do that. I'm yeah. guessing Ruby has the context already that this is for posting, like this is for a social media use case. Yeah, yeah Ruby is its own thing. It has its own Claude MD and it knows, like, I asked who it is and it told me specifically that, look, my core capabilities are this. I repurpose, I schedule, I multi-post and stuff like that. And Cornelius, it knows that Cornelius is the knowledge management agent. So it goes to Cornelius and asking, what are Eugene opinions and perspectives on future of AI? And now it's going to be like five minutes or something until this finishes, but, you know, it's going to get there, get some opinions out of there and then maybe create something useful, maybe not. And also going back to Cornelius, a couple of things that I wanted to show are the various commands that we have over here that allow to recall something, find connections, and actually also do autonomous connection searching, which is basically agent scanning the knowledge base for the hidden and obvious connections, presenting them to me so that I approve them or disapprove them, and we added them to the knowledge base. So basically it's like mining knowledge from within, sometimes in a combination with the knowledge from the outside, from like news or some other things, but basically finding and establishing hidden connections and so that later we can query it and receive those connections and maybe make some better conclusions. Yeah, so I think that's the, that's the most important like four agents that I wanted to show. What I've done just for fun is to create an MCP management software. And this MCP management software, these scripts, they allow me to like turn on and off and move different configured MCPs between these agents. For example, allowing my Ruby agent to have access to Instagram or to Google Workspace. There are thousands of options. And yeah, so as a result, like honestly, it's still kind of scary to say, but I do have this... Uh, uh, agentic system with self-improving agents, autonomously self-improving agents with a memory of any depth and capable of doing pretty much anything. And even you can say having a personality because it is relying on the second brain that has been built. And we can build hundreds of this kind of brains, but based on the different materials, that's another use case. I tried this one. It's actually very, very cool. I took a lot of the books on military management and critical thinking, like military books on critical thinking, and build the knowledge base out of that. So I took my previous version of the second brain as a base for that, and then I added insights on top of that 
from this particular literature. And it allowed me to create this agent that is opinionated in a certain way, that has a certain consistent characteristic in its decision-making, which is basically the recipe for finding the optimal combination of personality characteristics or knowledges that it considers important in order to get best results at doing some intellectual kind of work. When you talk about the agents autonomously improving can you explain that a little more? Like how are they how are they doing that? And is that happening in the background or is that something that you have oversight into? It's obviously something I have pretty deep oversight into, but I'm not gonna go into details of the actual procedure of how that happens. Okay. To be honest, it could, it's not that I'm afraid that somebody's gonna take it or steal it. No, it's more like I find it so powerful that I'm not sure it's safe. I'm not sure it's safe to share the mechanism to give an instrument to people who may want to do harm in order to, to use that somehow. And I haven't even formulated a final thought on mm. this one, but uh, when I can see that this agent is actually like self-improving under my supervision, but it's self-improving towards the goal, I'm like, okay, I mean, this, this is like close to the AGI, I guess in some sense. And I assume many other folks have something similar going on right now. If it's not widespread yet, it will be widespread soon. Yeah, makes sense. I partially asked too, because I'm wondering about, you know, like agents are obviously a big way of getting around like context limitations to just using Claude by itself, for example. But I'm, I'm wondering like how else you manage like potential context collapse or do you, do you see that? happening with your agents. Yeah. I do actually. I published a video the other week about the context oh. rot and I experience that very okay. often. And what I do is whenever I work with these agents, once I get to about 100,000 tokens and start from scratch and basically mm. restart it. But so I keep my tasks relatively contained. That's one of the limits right now of this agentic systems are the LLMs with the context rot. And I make every time they're releasing like we have a window of 1 million tokens now. I'm like, yeah, but for how long is it effective, actually? For how much of this context this thing is effective? And it's a, you know, in different LLMs, it's a different kind of curve. Some of them are rapid in terms of performance after a certain threshold. Others are more gradual or unpredictable. The point is that there's always, there's always context rot. So I'm trying to accomplish tasks within 100K, rarely successful, you know, at 150. I already expect that it's going to start hallucinating like crazy and doing some dumb stuff. You could switch to the 1 million sonnet before, but now they just uh, removed it from, maybe it's from my package on Claude, or maybe it's entirely from Claude code right now. 1 million context sonnet. This one that they give you over here, it's actually 200k tokens. And as you can see on the clear context, that's because we have a lot of these MCPs over here. On the clear context, we are already like 86k up. So not too many, too long tasks can be done here right now, but I think it's, you know, it's destined to improve over time. There's no other. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any, maybe some other questions or thoughts, or we can call it a wrap for today? Yeah, I have less of a technical question. When it comes to getting knowledge, into your knowledge base. Do you have agents for that as well? Or is that the you task? Like you're doing the reading, the research, and inputting it into your knowledge base for the agents to use? That's a me task. But honestly, from the technology perspective, Cornelius doesn't really care where insights are coming from. Some okay. people can extract insights from the outside materials. And I did that as well in Cornelius here, but I put my insights extracted by AI, first of all, in the AI extracted nodes. So I know that it's separate over here. And I put the document insights from external documents that have been mined by AI in a separate folder as well. Now, easily leave this running for a while to analyze a particular set of material. I think it actually, I want to show you this general Monroe. So this knowledge base, it's in a different project. It basically is created from, it was started with my knowledge base. And then on top of that, I extracted insights from something like 10 or 15 books on decision-making, military decision-making, critical thinking, that kind of stuff. And so it created 
whole new clusters over here, added some good connections. And, you know, I can go to this appropriate agent and ask, ask them or talk to them, consult with them on a particular topic.